started World War One from the American perspective. June second. I I never knew if you come up to me in the street and you're like, Tommy, from when to where? What years was World War One? I? I never know. Dude, straight up honest, I have no idea. I don't know. I will say 1970 to 1921 or so. I have fucking no idea. I don't know. And I don't care. Captain Lloyd W. Williams can hear these sounds 14 to 18. of combat. Interesting. I'll forget Men them in five of the 5th Marine Regiment pick their way through Bella Wood. Suddenly, forms come bursting from the thick Isn't woods. Isn't that a Con 98 carabine? The Marines raise their rifles, but instead of Stahlhelmed Germans, they find their lines swamped by battered French infantry. As their comrades retreat, <laughs> show me a more accurate description of uh, the French. Through the Just a joke. I love my French brothers. I love American them. Thank you, line, A French colonel approaches Captain Williams, but his English is broken and unintelligible. <laughs> Nothing has changed about the French. The French officer gives a snort of frustration and pulls a notepad from his kit, scribbling a note. Captain Williams reads the proffered order before fixing his bayonet, uttering six words that will echo through the history of the United States Marine Corps. Retreat? Hell, we just got here. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian. George Washington, founding father and first president of the United States, famously advised the young country not to involve itself in foreign affairs. Yeah, but back then the world wasn't globalized or international. I, I often have this issue with Americans that they look at stuff that was set in 1770 or some shit. Like, they, they said we should have weapons 20 years ago, man. They said I should have a bazooka and a fucking assault rifle. Few presidents seemed to take this advice I don't really to understand heart that shit. like Woodrow Wilson who commented before his inauguration that it would be ironic if his presidency was concerned mainly with matters abroad. President Wilson's remarks would prove prophetic, as he was the anti-war isolationist who led the United States into the First World War. In this video, we will examine how the US went from a country that simultaneously declared neutrality- well, There's a chance, right, that one day Hertz of Iron Fife it's gonna be World War One to World War Two, man. That would be so sick. In in modern times, paradox is not covering the First World War, which might be a bit boring. It's just infantry stuff. But if they could somehow create a Hertz of Iron Five that goes that that has maybe different starts, or you could play from World War One to World War Two, that that sounds like the future of Hertz of Iron Man. In many 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 years. The Entente to a Victoria major Freeze partner window. in the destruction of the yeah, Central Powers. Yeah, but I'm powers. talking about a good game. Safe behind its twin moats of the Atlantic and Pacific, the United States watched the development of the First World War with concern. When hostilities broke out in July of 1914, American ambassador to France, Myron T. Herrick, advocated taking an active role in mediation. Expression from our nation would have great weight in this crisis. A strong plea for delay and moderation from the President of the United States would meet with the respect and approval of Europe. President Wilson called for neutrality on an existential level, exhorting all Americans to observe neutrality in thought and in deed. To this end, the government prohibited American banks from loaning money to any belligerent nation, mm. an act that the then Secretary of State and noted gold hater William Jennings Bryan hoped would both cement American neutrality gold and hater. bring the war to a speedy conclusion. One cannot fight with an empty war chest, after all. This fiscal neutrality was not long lived, as President Wilson reversed the decision in 1915 in response to the British Empire indicating their stockpiles of cash were about to run out, and thus they could not afford to continue buying American goods. Though protesting its neutrality at each turn, yeah. the United States- the, the animations on this channel are out of this world, man. It must take them so long, this is some good shit, man. It was wow. all too keen to do business with the Entente. With the metaphorical floodgates opened, American creditors sent a veritable tsunami of greenbacks to the British Empire, who turned right around and spent that money in the United States. But the British were not the only foreign shoppers in American markets. Germany, man. Germany, when it still looked good. God, I have to be so careful nowadays. German Empire, too, sought to buy critical supplies from Uncle Sam. 
with the weapon. That's why I always say, right? Like, all these fucking Nazis in Germany, they're like, oh, we need Hitler back, we need Hitler back. I was like, Hitler's the worst thing that ever happened to us, man. If Hitler never happened, we would still be looking Western like this, front dude. grinding to a stalemate. I never Germany said how like, these from neutral Nazi countries patriots to ferry like food that, and so other necessities purchased in the United States to the continent. But British naval supremacy and their blockade of Germany prevented much of it from getting through. The United States formally protested the British blockade in March of 1915, but the issue was quietly resolved in a meeting that saw the United States accept a British... It's very sad that this flagman you see more and more often nowadays in Germany because people are fucking mentally ill in the British brain, prohibition on selling food to Germany. When the blockade began impacting American cotton exports and threatening a vital pillar <clears throat> of the economy, Britain agreed to free. increase their cotton purchases to cover the shortfall. The upshot of all of this economic backroom dealing was an ostensibly neutral United States bowing to any small pressure from the British Empire to stop selling to Germany. Between 19 This is the future of education, man. I really believe this. What, what Griffin Johnson here is doing is where kids are more and more multimedia, right? Kids nowadays, they have consoles, PCs, phones, everything, right? Do they want to sit in a class and listen to an old ass six year old teacher being a boring fuck? Or do they want to sit at home and watch this animation stuff, right? And see moving pictures, man. This is the future of, 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 of education. Uh, step by step, it's going to be more and more like this, man. And at some point, dude, I know I, I would rather watch a 60-minute video about a certain topic than listening to a boring ass teacher for 60 minutes. I would learn much more and keep much more information from the video. And I kind of envy you young people, man, that nowadays you can watch this stuff, man. It's probably very good for, for learning, man. 14 to 1916, American trade really with the German Empire yet. plummeted by an economy shattering 99%. Thank you, Sandra. Germany, back to an economic wall, ordered a submarine blockade of Great Britain in retaliation. The United States protested, declaring this to be a violation of... If the Louisiana attack, I don't know, maybe you guys know the historical proof, I don't know, but if the Louisiana attack was a false attack mission by uh, by the UK, that would be fucking genius. International law. Be genius. This double standard, <clears throat> accepting a British blockade of Germany, book, but not Young a German blockade of Britain, anymore. was acknowledged and waved away by President Wilson who claimed that the British Navy did not threaten American lives in the same way that Germany's powerful fleet of submarines did. Wilson was unaware that, that Germany had only nine weapons. submarines with which to enforce its blockade, as the sinking of the Lusitania on March 7th, 1915 would throw into sharp relief. Thank you, go ahead. Hashtag 139, boys. Old school hashtag, man. This is Titanic, man. That was 1912, right? 11? When was Titanic? The sinking of the RMS Lusitania, which killed 128 exactly like American man. citizens, was only one in a series 19... of incidents that drove the American Titanic. people further and further into nice the shit. Entente nice. camp. The American public, already displeased at reports of German atrocities in Belgium, condemned the apparent sinking of a civilian vessel, Thank you. and a diplomatic <clears throat> back and forth between Washington and Berlin ensued. Calls to enter the war rang in the halls of the capital, stopped only by German promises to scale back their submarine operations. America was pacified for now, but German Americans began to face prejudice at home, prejudice that would only intensify as the war progressed. Doubts of German Americans' loyalty would be continuously raised, with President Wilson declaring that any man who carries a hyphen with him carries a dagger that he is ready to plunge into the vitals of this republic when he gets ready. <laughs> a nakedly hostile remark towards the largest non-English speaking group in the United States at the time. Government-stoked and homegrown paranoia escalated into violence, with German Americans shot forced from their homes oh, I didn't know that. or lynched, such as the case of Robert Paul Prager, a naturalized citizen who was lynched Russians, as a right? spy in April of 1918. This hatred still a big was thing. further stoked by an incredible act of sabotage. As previously mentioned, the Entente funneled much money to Yankee businesses, including munitions plants. Germany, unable to buy American weaponry thanks to the British blockade, began sending spies to find where the Entente was procuring and transporting weapons and munition, and to halt the flow of materiel, if possible. One such point of departure was Black Tom Island in New York Harbor, 
And on July 30th, 1916, German agents decided to have a little fireworks show. Igniting over $20 million worth of stockpile wow. munitions, the Germans created one of the largest non-nuclear explosions in human history. Wow, I a shockwave equivalent to a magnitude 5 earthquake wow. was felt as far away as I Philadelphia. The Statue of Liberty was damaged, and Black Tom Island was devastated. I've never 110 in my life. by 50 meter crater left behind by the blast. Jeez. Momentum was steadily building for the United States to enter the war. That was not and in a display of military acumen that would make von Bismarck proud, German planners determined that the best way to keep the United States from entering wars was to actively target their merchant shipping and threaten American lives. That all doesn't sound Their rationale clever. was simple, bringing back unrestricted submarine warfare and sinking every ship headed to Britain, American or not, would starve the Entente into submission oh, no, and end clever, the war before the United States could even be moved to intervene. American ships were sunk, but that President Wilson, just barely re-elected, continued to demur, instead proclaiming armed neutrality by ordering American ships to be armed and authorized to fire on any aggressor. As their ships were raided and more were lost, the American public began clamoring for more yeah, very, than just like armed new. The same stupidity that Putin is showing nowadays, man. You're just you're just making everyone angry against you and united Neutrality. against you. President Wilson continued to resist, but his efforts were ended by the infamous Zimmerman telegram, an order by the German foreign minister to his men in Mexico to court America's southern neighbor with promises of recovering territory in Texas, Arizona, oh, and so New Mexico man. if they would invade like the United States game. for the center. Looking at this map, this reminds me of the mega campaign. Asked his cabinet for advice and found a single word on all of his advisors' lips. Both Kill. houses of the United States Congress passed resolutions supporting a war on Germany, and President Wilson formally requested Congress acknowledge a state of war had been created by Germany's actions rather than declare war outright. Congress responded The United States would go on to declare war on Austria-Hungary that December, but not against any other central powers. by declaring war outright Dude, on if you're April honest, 6th, man, both world 1917. Been by Germans, Neutrality had it was ended, the Austrians, man. it was time to go over there. The United States that entered the First World War was far from a military power. <clears throat> Isolationism had taken its toll on America's armed forces, leaving President Wilson to call. You know, I'm, I'm getting a, for my new apartment, for my new steaming room, I'm getting a secret laps chair, which is a $700 chair, a Katsuki chair. I text them, dude, what's up, man? I'm a streamer. Like, I get 2K viewers sometimes. I can't show your uh, chair off the whole time if you give it to me for free. Sure, give me your address. Boop. $700 share, no problem. Call up a minuscule standing time, army right? and dust off a navy of aging shit, battleships. Crazy shit. This, in a way, suited the president just fine. As Wilson believed, the simple act of so entering the chairs, war man. would tip the balance of power very, very firmly cool. in the favor of the Entente. <clears throat> While the British and French clamored for a fight to the it finish... It's worth it, though. It is worth it. If just two people buy the... I'm gonna sit on their chair for, for years, and if just two people buy the chair, they already made plus on this whole thing, right? That's why uh, you should give so much to content creators, man. It's You make the money back so hard, man. Wilson had his gaze fixed firmly on bringing the Germans to the negotiating table, and truly making this the war to end all wars. Uh, that didn't With so the well. passage of the Selective Service Act, widespread conscription swelled the Americans' numbers. Two million men had volunteered at the outbreak of war, and conscription would see 2.8 million more so go lot, so over the there. Get a lot of Whether time. volunteers or conscripts, Yankee troops began making yeah, their way sense. to Europe. I'm starting to slowly feel Victoria free. It's, it's, it's coming now, dude. American troops landed on European shores in June of 1917. British and French commanders initially viewed the newly arrived Americans as reinforcements they could use to supplement their dwindling numbers. Some black soldiers, famous Harlem Hellfighters, were folded into the French army for the duration of the war. But General John Black Jack Pershing, infamous pacifier of the Philippines and commander of the American Expeditionary Force, sought to keep his men together in a unified American army. And the first major engagement fought by the Americans would come the following summer, the Battle of Contigny. A German Must have sucked for these black people, man. It reminds me of Muhammad Ali, right? Like, you live in America as a black man, and you just get discriminated all the time, and then you're supposed to go to war for that country that just discriminates you the whole time? That must have really, really sucked, man. Of Contigny represented a golden opportunity to Pershing 
who committed the 1st Infantry Division, better known as the Big Red One, to wipe it out. Oh, Big this Red One! That's in Hertz of Iron 4. That's one of the first divisions you have in every single Hertz of Frank Iron. Frank would not only consolidate Entente lines, but red Pershing one. hoped seeing the American... Does the Big Red One still exist? Probably, I mean, with this culture. They probably still exist. Dude, if you're, if you're working... Oh, they're the 1st Infantry Division of all of USA. They still exist, huh? That's that's a cool history, man. You can be very proud. They have been active since World War One. I, I don't. Oh look, this is how division is built, like in Hoi Four. Yeah, if this was Hoi Four, right? This is a infantry symbol, artillery symbol, headquarters. This this kind of shows you what Hoi Five could that. You could have a headquarter, like some mods. You could have, you could actually have trains or logistics more involved. Machine gun battalion. Easy ideas for Hoi Five. In man. action would boost French confidence in 4. their American comrades. At 6.45 a.m. on May 28, 1918, American infantry advanced under cover of French artillery. French tanks and flamethrower detachments advanced alongside the Yanks, and the combined force advanced up the slopes of Contigny. What a Despite the help have been, of the dude. French gunners, tankers, and air support, the Americans were mauled during the uphill so battle. So many dying for fucking nothing. Yet they succeeded nothing. in capturing the village. Uh, dude, I'm really German getting older. When I was young, I was like, war is cool. I want to play war video games. I want to do soft air. I want to play paintball. I was like really into war, right? But once you get older and wiser, you realize how fucking dumb this is. I have a kid now, right? All these people dying there are someone's son. And they're dying for fucking what, man? For fucking what, dude? For a bunch of fucking people sitting in their palaces, Perhaps dude. This began not long thereafter. But the Americans held firm turning back two days of offensives and keeping a firm grip on Contigny. The Americans accomplished their objective of not only what taking the village, but also demonstrating that they could nothing. be counted on. I mean, I would say there's historically some wars that are necessary. For example, the Allies fighting Nazi Germany, that's actually worth to die for. Like, you're literally protecting the world from pure evil. Or like, f fighting against Russia, right now, who are also tyrants. But some wars, man, are just like Vietnam and stuff, right? Sure, some people are gonna text me, it was to, uh, contem to, to contain the communists. Yeah, but my god, you sent some white fucking young dude over there, man, and he just dies for, for fucking what, man? Scrap. Fuck that scrap would come at Belo Wood. A German offensive punched a hole in French lines, and the US Marines were sent to plug the gap, pushing back the German assault oh, yeah, and repelling cool, numerous nice. attempts cool. to reopen the hole. From there, the Marines assaulted critical German <clears throat> positions in and around Bello Wood, yeah, 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 taking yeah, yeah, yeah. heavy casualties but accomplishing the their objectives. Fuck. It was among the trees of Bello that Marine lore could be written. Captain Williams' refusal to retreat has become the motto of the 5th Marines. But Bello Wood and Contigny were only the prelude to the largest offensive in American military history. Okay, I want to play Victoria point. now. If Paradox is clever, man, they should uh, collaborate with, with uh, Armchair Historian or Victoria Free. From September make, like, 26th a nice video. to November 11th, 1.2 million American troops embarked on ben the Meuse Argonne offensive, to be honest, aimed I'm very at educated capturing the railhead at Sedan. The offensive hit immediate stumbling blocks, as the Americans deployed inexperienced units already weakened by the Spanish flu. As the battle dragged on, both the Americans and the French sent troops to shore up the line. The Entente spirits would be lifted by an incredible act of heroism. Corporal Alvin York, a sharpshooting infantryman from the 82nd Infantry, now the 82nd Airborne, killed 25 and captured 132 Germans, Jesus a feat Christ. that would earn him the Medal of Honor. That is crazy, In a bid man. to break the stand- Dude, I remember a long time ago, we did something on stream. I don't want to do it right now, but if you guys are interested, long time ago, like three years ago, there is a Wikipedia page with every single Medal of Honor ever rewarded. And if you go to that page, what's cool is it shows the name of the soldier and where they served. And then in the end, it shows what they did. It shows what they did to get that medal. And it's crazy, dude. You can spend hours reading that shit. They did crazy shit. Like, everyone has a story, what they did. <laughs> Super interesting, man. Maybe someone has the link so you guys can check, but I remember that. It was fucking sick, dude. Elmate, it's, 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 it says exactly what they did to get that the uh, honor at Côte du Châtillon, an imposing position that American Lieutenant General Robert Bullard described thus, not a line, a net, four kilometers deep, wire interlaced knee-high in grass, wire tangled devilishly oh. in forests, this is some cool boxes in succession, shit, one covering another. No fox Yeah, that's that link. Years ago, we checked this. And you click on uh, war? If you go to World War II, you have to click an extra link. I remember that. Medal of Honor recipients of World War II. And this is crazy, man. 
And look, you can literally read what they did. This is so sick. Single-handedly evacuating 45 casualties under heavy fire or mortar fire. Risk his life to save several of his fellow soldiers and repel an enemy attack single-handedly. Uh, Richard B. Anderson was in a shell crater. He hurled his body upon a grenade to save his companions. Man, hey, that's crazy, right? Like, our lives are... Look what these fuckers had to go through. How old was he when he died? 22, Alter. 22, he managed to throw himself on a fucking grenade. Isn't that the saddest thing on Earth, man? That is the saddest thing on Earth. And right now, this shit happens in Ukraine and to Russians for nothing, man. Because of one fucking maniac, man. Saddest thing on Earth. Here, but concrete saddest thing on Earth. Bits of trenches, more wire, a There's few actually light a movie guns, about the third guy. Oh, defense man, look at that. in depth. The Mighty First was repulsed by this net, but their loss was quickly avenged by your friend and mine, Douglas MacArthur of the 42nd Rainbow Division, a Douglas patchwork of he National gets, Guard uh, troops from states from Iowa so to much. Alabama. The Guardsmen were able to succeed where the Big Red One failed, cracking Côte du Châtillon and turning the tide of the offensive, just in time for the Armistice to be signed on November 11th. America would prove as active in peace as they were in the final days of the war. President Wilson brought his 14 points to the negotiations at Versailles, and pushed for these principles to provide the bedrock for the post-war world. Wilson- and They did a big mistake there, man. They fucked Germany so hard that it was- it, it sounds fucked up, but it was almost a natural occurrence that World War II would happen from the Germans, man. I, I always often think that even if Hitler would have never been born, there would still be World War II. And envisioned eventually. a League of Nations <clears throat> that would promote global peace. And, and I think we should learn from this. This is quite interesting. What happens if Russia is beaten, right? Russia is not able to take Ukraine. Vladimir Putin dies, gets assassinated. It's very important that we don't fuck up Russia so much, right? We, we can't make them hateful. We, we have to work with them. We have to find bridges, man. They're very important to learn from history, man, which humans have a big issue with. And provide a diplomatic alternative to fighting. Hungary was Remo fucked in Germany. Wilson also sought to impose his peaceableness on Europe as a whole, dismantling the old colonial system and promoting self-determination for all peoples across the world. But Wilson's ideas were not universally accepted, with the previously mentioned Secretary of State Lansing remarking that promoting self-determination would raise hopes Should which can never be realized. <laughs> And that the phrase is simply loaded with dynamite. The this video made me mad excited for Victoria Free all of a sudden. British and French were equally skeptical, with the French representative only reading Wilson's points when the German delegation requested that they be the basis of the peace talks. Fearing that the Americans and Germans would conclude a separate peace based on Wilson's ideas, the French and British accepted the 14 points as Germany requested. Wilson became quite popular for his peacemaking image and his League of Nations. I've been, uh, some of my friends like uh, Buckwin and uh, Dave, they play Victoria Free already and they say it's very good. It was formally good. established in 1920, say, but neither the Treaty of Versailles, which ended the First World War, nor the United States entry into the League of Nations were approved by Congress, a sign that isolationism had returned to America's shores. America's war was over for now. For now. Participation in the war to end all wars brought America onto the world stage in an unprecedented fashion, but the public's desire to return to a quiet isolation dashed any hopes that President Wilson had of his country leading the world into a new era of peace and international cooperation. The League of Nations would go on to crumble under the weight of its members' indifference to its decisions specifically the <clears throat> open defiance of the Japanese Empire in the 1930s. German Americans came out of the war browbeaten into hiding their culture and assimilating. Hmm. While before the war a full quarter of American high school students studied the German language, by 1918 only 1% of high schools even wow. had German offered I never thought about that, that World War I has really destroyed German culture in the USA. I never thought about that. But Ultimately, it, makes total sense. it would take another world war and a new president to see Lady Liberty take the center stage in world affairs again. Very good video, man.